How's it going guys? Kyle here with Newegg TV. Today we'll be talking about NVIDIA's latest and greatest GeForce GTX 770. Now uh, for those of you who don't already know, it essentially lies in the tier just below the GTX 780 that NVIDIA recently launched, and it is the successor to the GTX 670. So with that said, why don't we take a look at the specs of this beautiful card. So this card is coming equipped with the same GK104 chip that is found on the GTX 680. It has 8 SMX units, giving you a total of 1536 CUDA cores. It's got 3.54 billion transistors. Uh, it also comes featured with four 64-bit memory controllers. That's going to give you a 256-bit memory interface. Uh, the memory modules on this guy are rated at 7 gigabits per second. Memory speed is clocked at 7,010 megahertz. Pretty darn fast right there. Uh, and that essentially is going to give you a peak memory bandwidth of 224.3 gigabytes per second. Aside from that, you also have a 512 kilobyte L2 cache. The base clock for this card is 1,046 megahertz. The boost clock is at 10,000, I'm sorry, 10,000, that's crazy, uh, 1,085 megahertz. And uh, essentially, NVIDIA is recommending a 600 watt minimum power supply for this unit. And uh, it does have a 230 watt TDP. Moving on to the hardware, if you guys are wondering why this card looks exactly like the GTX Titan and the GTX 780, well, it's because it's using the exact same cooler. So uh, the design is all pretty much the same. Uh, you still got the uh, blower style fan, and that's going to be dispersing hot air through the dual slot aluminum heat sink that you can see through that polycarbonate window. Uh, but uh, you probably heard this a million times, but I'm going to say it again. It's just a fantastic looking card. Uh, the cooler itself is just built like a brick. It's extremely heavy, but even that said, uh, when it's in your case, uh, you know, slotted in this way, which is generally what you see with most chassis configurations, uh, there's hardly any sag or slouching of the card whatsoever. So truly a testament to the rigidity of the PCB and the internal bracket that uh, NVIDIA has implemented into this design. Uh, but aside from that, you've got uh, some logo here. You've got some G GeForce GTX logo and there's actually an LED behind it that will shine green. Uh, and you can even configure that LED and customize it uh, to your liking. So within the NVIDIA software at the OS level, you can actually make the light pulsate if you wish or you can actually change the brightness or intensity of the LED based on your GPU load. You've got some power connectivity over here. You've got one 6-pin and one 8-pin PCIe power connector. Here's a look at the PCB. It's black and uh, relatively matte, not too glossy, which is nice. Uh, you've got some SLI connectors there. This card does support up to four-way SLI, so two, three, or four. Uh, it's, uh, it's good to go, pretty much. There's your PCIe Gen 3 connector. And let's take a look at the back of the card here. You've got some ventilation holes, some slits there. It's where most of the air is going to be ejected out. Uh, you've also got some video outs, including DisplayPort, HDMI, and you've got two dual-link DVI ports. The one on the bottom is analog, and the one on top is digital. All right, so now that we've gone over some of the specs and the hardware of the card, why don't we talk about some of the features that uh, you can't necessarily see on the card. Uh, so what I'm talking about there, uh, first off, is GPU Boost 2.0. Um, so for those of you who aren't already familiar, uh, NVIDIA had implemented GPU Boost 1.0 uh, for the first time in their 600 series of graphics cards. And that was essentially um, implementing a uh, power target into the card. So it was a new way to overclock. Uh, but essentially, NVIDIA engineers have kind of realized recently that uh, um, temperature is often more of an inhibitor to GPU performance than power is. So with GPU Boost 2.0, uh, they've actually done away with the power target model and kind of gravitated towards a temperature target. Uh, so that's essentially what this card features. It allows you to overclock based on a temperature parameter that you've set, uh, either automatically or manually. Uh, default, right out of the box, this card will come with a temperature target of 80 degrees Celsius. Uh, but with uh, monitoring software, uh, like EVGA's Precision X, for example, you can actually go in there and change that temperature target to 85 degrees Celsius, for example. And from that point, you should definitely see a, an increase in performance with your boost clock uh, because essentially you've set a higher threshold uh, via temperature. Uh, but aside from that, GPU Boost also lets you change the, the fan curve of your fan. So uh, once again, with the monitoring software, you can actually determine how fast or how much your fan spins up depending on the GP, GPU load that it's currently undergoing. Um, but uh, if you don't want to mess around manually with the, with the fan um, to kind of adjust the smoothness uh, and how it fluctuates, uh, NVIDIA has also implemented their uh, adaptive temperature control, uh, controller, I should say, with this card, which essentially just limits the abrupt uh, fluctuation of fan speed when your, fan, uh, when your GPU is under load. So oftentimes you'll see that if your card's going from 0 to 100% load in 5 seconds, you'll hear your fan ramp up really fast, and it's kind of a, a really abrupt experience. So essentially what the, uh, 
the, that uh, adaptive controller aims to do is limit that abrupt uh, acoustic experience and just kind of provide for a smoother um, transition when your fan's ramping up and down. Aside from that, you've also got the option to overvolt your card now. Uh, this is a feature that we saw with the GTX Titan as well as uh, the, uh, the GTX 780. That's basically because it's also included in GPU Boost 2.0. Um, but uh, essentially that's really nice for overclockers. It uh, just adds another layer of customizability when overvolting your card. Um, other things that come included with this card is GFE, or GeForce Experience. And this is a software that uh, NVIDIA has been working on for a long time now. And essentially what that does is it's a really easy solution for changing your in-game settings. So it, it basically optimizes your video quality settings for any game that, that you might be playing uh, based on your video card. So essentially, it's just kind of like a one-click solution. You, you press a button, you let, uh, it automatically detects your card and says, oh, well, these are the optimal settings that you can, uh, that you can play at. Uh, saves a lot of time, a lot of hassle, and uh, it's just a really, a really nice um, lightweight software that uh, NVIDIA is working on. Um, and included with GeForce Experience, you'll also get Shadow Play. Um, and Shadow Play is, is really cool because it's, uh, it's a new feature. It wasn't even found on the Titan, for example. It's, it's basically just new to the 700 series of cards. Um, and essentially what that does is it, it records your last 20 minutes of gameplay, or it gives you the option to anyway. Uh, and it does so kind of with some really cool technology because it, features a, uh, it utilizes a built-in H.264 encoder within the card. So you're using hardware itself uh, along with you know, some of the GFE um, processing power, but essentially it's, it's not completely software based. So you might notice if you do a lot of game capturing with Fraps, for example, which is completely software based, you'll see a, a massive performance hit when you start recording your game footage. And uh, speaking personally, like I've always had to tone down my video quality settings anytime I'm recording a game with Fraps just so I can play, or just so I can achieve playable frame rates while I'm recording. So that also aims to solve the issue of that. All right, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this overview. Once again, this has been NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 770. I'm Kyle with Newegg TV, and if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our Newegg channel, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoy this content. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.